Do you know, to me, customer service is sales. If you fuck up service, you fuck up sales. You're not going to get more business. I wish you guys could see Gina's body language right now. She's like <laughs> hunched <laughs> over like a like a panther about to attack. Oh, hey, Warners. Welcome to another episode of The Women Your Mother Warned You About. The podcast that makes business sexy again. I'm Gita Tremarco, master trainer at Sales Gravy. I'm Rachel Pitts, mommy, wifey, mortgage loan officer with U.S. Mortgage and creator of your ultra fit lifestyle. Woo, woo. And this show is what? Sponsored by Sales Gravy and Sales Gravy University. Thank you, Jeb Blunt, for that. In this episode, it's just me and Rachel again, because you know what? What else do you need sometimes? But a little rogue fun with Gina and Rachel. And here's what I was thinking about talking talking about today because we talked about this on the last episode like customer service shit well we talked about your snowboard (laughs) snowboarding situation and just the coaching learnings from it but we also talked a little bit about the customer service and what you dealt with with um you know the whole airfare ordeal and that got me thinking because I've been wanting to blog about this but I'm like why not podcast about it I've had two recent customer service experiences that one made me want to hurt someone. And the second one was like, it was just, I think every, every people can relate to it, especially women. So let's go with the easy one first, which is Jiffy Lube. Okay. Already the brand name is being <sighs> thrown out there. Oh my gosh. Did I just say that Jiffy Lube? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jiffy <laughs> well, Lube. Well, as a woman, I'm curious about this story because I've had a negative experience there before. So continue. So let's talk about Jiffy Lube because, you know, to me, customer service is sales. If you fuck up service, you fuck up sales. You're not going to get more business. Now, here's the cool thing about Jiffy Lube. Let's go positive first. Like I follow a lot of training type of stuff. And over the years, Jiffy Lube has been very well known for being a top company for training, believe it or not, for training, customer service training. And they, 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 they try they do. And so they try. But here are some fails for them. So I made a choice to go to Jiffy Lube to get my oil changed because I fell behind in that because I'm driving a lot to Thompson, Georgia. And a friend of mine was in my car who is very big into cars. And like, I don't know, he's got eagle eyes, but he grew up in the car business. And he's like, oh, you need an oil change. I'm like, how do you know that? But anyway, he somehow saw that, that I need an oil change. And I'm like, I just haven't had time to go to the dealer, which I usually do because I love Kia. If we want to talk customer service good stuff, Kia of Myrtle Beach, the bomb for customer service. That's another story. But I just didn't have time to make the drive to Kia because it's like 20 miles, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're busy, it is. So I go down the block to the Jiffy Lube because I'm going to go like, stay in your car. You don't got to get out. I'm like, great. I can work while I'm sitting there. Fine. So... Jiffy Lube guy, very nice, super, very sweet, very cool. But you know, when you're sitting there, I'm sure you can relate, Rachel. You know, at any minute, they're going to come back and shove a filter in your face. (laughs) That's exactly right. You're right. Right? Yes. Right? Is that what came to your mind? When you said Jiffy Lube, I immediately thought of my experience where... Like my normal assumption is that most of the people that work in Jiffy Lube, and this is actually discrimination, but I'm going to say it anyway. Most of them are guys that are there, right? Most guys work there. My bad experience was a, was a female that worked there that came with the filter shoving it in my face. And I was like, that, that was the last time I went back there. So tell us about your filter. So, you know, I, I come to expect it, right? The filter. <laughs> All right, they come and they show you the dirty filter. I mean, it's smart, right? Oh my God, it's a dirty filter. Okay, yeah, clean it. Right, so I mean, it's like, I'm not young. I've had cars my entire life. So I understand the dirty filter. But I couldn't remember the last time I changed the filter because when I do go to Kia, 
I love Kia and people are not, you know, keen about dealerships, but I feel so safe there because when I go there, they're just by the book, like open your owner's manual at this mileage, you do this at this mileage, you do that. They're not there to like sell me things I don't need. They're just following the book for car maintenance. Right. So I trust them 100%. Also, because when I go in for service, even it's just an oil change and they do wash my car, which I love which Jiffy Lube does not, they will say, hey, you're about 3,000 miles away from needing brakes. So on your next trip, just want to give you a heads up that you should plan for that, right? Awesome. Thank you. I'm not going to be shocked now when I show up and you're like, guess what? You owe hundreds of dollars. So that's what I love about Kia is that I don't have to think about it. I trust them. They're experts. They take care of my car. That's why it's lasted long. So I don't remember if I need a filter. I'm just going to go with it and be like, yeah, okay, change the filter, right? They changed the filter. And it was dirty looking, unless they have like a bait and switch filter. I I don't know. It's like the filter thing. I I 100% agree about the dealership, though. That's true. So continue about the filter. So they come back and um, and then a couple seconds later, they come back and they're like, um, so I'm like, here it comes. Like, and I can feel myself cringing every time they approach the car. And they're like, well, at 60,000 miles, you're going to need a transmission, yada, yada, yada. And I go, um, okay. I said, well, I'm currently at 72,000 miles, so... Did this not happen last time I was at the dealership? Well, we're just letting you know that it's 60,000 miles. I'm like, oh, um, okay, well, I'm going to pass on it today. Um, because in my mind, here's what my head's saying. I trust Kia so much. Do you mean to tell me that it's 60,000 miles they forgot to tell me that? I don't think so. They would have told me that. No, I don't remember if I did it, but chances are I did it. Now, meanwhile, I'm texting my friend, the car guy, and I'm like, do I need this transmission thing? He's like, well, it should have happened at 60,000. I'm like, well, I'm not sure. I'm like, is there a way to check if it happened? He's like, not really. I'm like, oh, he's like, they're just making a decision based on your mileage. I'm like, so they don't, they don't know if I actually really need it. Technically, they, he's like, there's no real way to tell if you need it. You, you should have already had it. I'm like, now I'm like irritated. They're just like doing this checklist of like, she's over 60,000 miles. So I go, um, you know, that's okay. I'm going to wait until I'm going to go to the dealer and do that. And he goes, oh, you could do that, but... It'll be much faster if you do it here. <laughs> what kind of objection turnaround is that? <laughs> that is a bad one. <laughs> I can't wait. Tell us what happened next. Gina. What? <laughs> I'm like, um, I'm okay with that. I don't think I want it to go so fast. I don't think I want you to do the job in a jiffy on my transmission is what my inside voice is saying. I'm like, no, th- th- I'm, but thank you for letting me know. Comes back again. Oh God. I'm like, I just want to get the fuck out of here. I'm busy. Um, and you know, they're wearing their masks and he's like, there's a cor- in the corner, top it off. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? As in the corner, top it off. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I got to top it off in the corner. I'm like, top what off? So I was $3, top it off. I I, I was just like, for $3, whatever you got to top off, top it off, because I don't even know what he's talking about. It turned out when my car friend looked at my car later, says, oh, it looks like it was the coolant. I'm like, oh, corner is coolant. Okay. I wasn't understanding under the mask. That's another issue. If we're going to wear masks, let's enunciate. (laughs) God. Okay, enunci- I don't know if enunciation is a good, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think you can teach someone who doesn't enunciate to enunciate more I, with I, a mask. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> go back to go back to the se- multiple sewing. I think I recall though, I think that's why I never will go back to Jiffy Lube is because I think that was also my experience. But I start, I was more, even more like riled up because 
I feel like this is again, I feel like it's like a man tactic against a woman at a car place to try to yes. upsell because they know that they can. And so when it was a woman doing it to me, I was even more offended because I was like, girl, I have my you, back, bitch. I'm telling you right now that my husband will tell me if I need to do that. And I don't need to do that today. So please don't come back again. I need to pay you for the oil change and get the fuck out of here. Like it's, it is, it's like multiple, I wonder, that'd be interesting to find out if their sales training process encourages them to go back more than once with more than one item. Oh, real or perceived. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, and that in itself, right. Is interesting, which leads me to another story. Um, (laughs) Well, it's like kind of a, would you like fries with that shake approach? But like, would you like, you know, fries with your burger approach, but at the same time, like, in it's different. It's well, it's like, would you like, would you like fries? No. Would you like a shake? No. Would you like a fish sandwich? No. Yeah, please. Can I leave? Are you sure? Because the fish sandwiches come out real fast right now. (laughs) We've got a lot of extra. (laughs) Right. Like, so it's like, I get it. Go back, go back and sell and resell. Okay. So here's, here's the sales lesson, right? The best, the, the easiest client to get is a repeat client right? Someone that already exists, right? So, so it's kind of the same concept that they're following of like, here's a customer. They're already a customer. What else can we sell the customer? I'm all for it. I do it all day long with my clients. Transparently, they're a client. They trust me. They love me. They're happy with me. So I'm going to sell them other things. Not all in one sitting though. Right. They'd actually, the, Jiffy Lou, because they have that sales tactic, because that's what it is, they've lost my business forever rather than Correct. because I would rather go there for the reason that you went there. Cause it's quick and it's the same fucking thing. I mean, just because I don't know how to change oil doesn't mean it's not a simple thing. It just makes you get dirty. So those guys are providing a service that should go pretty quick. And right. I would continue to come back and continue to come back and continue to come back if they didn't do make me feel the way that you're describing. Cause I've been there. Yeah, don't like, don't just stop keep stop puking on me. Next thing you know, it's like a two hundred dollar oil change, and I'm like, well, how did the fuck did that happen, right? And I think I walked out at eighty dollars, and I had a coupon on top of it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I I actually just got a new coaching client who, and, and I talked about this. Actually, I talked about this in one of my fanatical prospecting classes. She you know, coaching and you know, this is such a personal sale because a lot of people are taking money out of their pocket to pay for it. So it's not like corporate dollars. So um, a lot of the clients prospects I talk to, they want to shop around, which they should because coaching is very personal. So you want to, and I mean, you've done this, like you want to make sure it's the right coach, your line, the personality works and, and all the things, right? So this coaching client went shopped around um, she listens to this, so she'll know who she is. And then, um, and we joked about it. I'm like, if you need to go date someone else for a minute, that's fine. You'll be back. I can wait for you. And when she did come back and we talked about, you know, why she didn't go with the other one, she was already, she was pretty sure she wanted me, but she just wanted to have something to compare to. She basically said, and and you'll be familiar with this. This is old school coaching. She's like, they wanted me to lock into a 12-month commitment. And I just didn't feel comfortable with that. I just didn't. It's not what I wanted to do because, you know, which is, I mean, I encourage anyone who's going to do coaching, like, don't lock into 12 months. I used to make people do that, but things change. You don't know what you want. Get your get your feet wet. Check it out. L- let me, you know, we don't know if we're going to be a good fit. Do a three-month thing. That's what we sell at Sales Gravy. So she came back, and so the salesperson said, well, um, well, if we could just do three months. So all of a sudden, it was like it went from a year to like, oh, we can do three months, right? The downsell. I get the downsell even. I totally get the downsell. And and to me, it's sort of old school. I'd rather go with the downsell and then work my way up and give options or say, here are your options. At the high level, you can do this. At the low level, you can do this. Let's see what's the best fit for you. But they went in high, didn't give her the low option. Now they give her the low option. You know what her reaction was? I was concerned 
that the entire time in their minds, they were going to be trying to sell me the entire time to advance me to the higher option. So she was uncomfortable being in a three month option, knowing that she was just going to get sold to again Mm -hmm. versus letting it happen organically. Mm -hmm. So that's my jiffy lube, right? That, that, that's how you like lose business. Now let's talk about my computer. Oh God. (laughs) I can't even, do you feel stronger about this than you do LinkedIn trolls? Yes. Okay. Let's hear it. We all know how I feel about LinkedIn trolls. <laughs> you all suck. You all need help with the, the LinkedIn trolls with your pitching in your messages. Gina is a really great coach in that. So just consider the next time you want to send a LinkedIn troll p- <laughs> spam mail, then contact Gina directly. Yeah, I love one of the most recent ones. Like, um, and I felt bad. Like, it's another woman. I want to help other women, but she's like, um, I, I felt like you would be interested in in investing. And I said, What in the world made you think I would be in, interested in investing my money with your institution? What? Exactly. They don't know what to do with me when I say that, right? Because I'm teaching people like identify the needs of your prospect so that you can create a relate kind of statement before you go in for your pitch. And then you connect the relate to the value you bring to their problem. You don't even know me. How do you know my financial situation? I've never talked to you before. I said yes to connecting to you on LinkedIn. Do you have access to my bank account and I don't know it? Who the F are you? And I learned, I'm like, what made you think that? Um, I just I just thought, I'm like, you just thought what? Well, okay, well, uh, well, okay, well, never mind. Sorry to bother you. I said, no, I want to know. And then, then they unconnect for me on LinkedIn, which is hysterical. Oh, wow. This was all like via a LinkedIn. Yes. And she unconnected with you? Yes. She's not the only one to unconnect for me. They run when I put them on blast and I go, your approach sucks and you need help with it. <sighs> I tell them that. But it's true. You know, I've actually gone Someone into, needs to tell we, them. We've talked about this before when people on on Facebook message me with like, hey, I just thought of you and you would love to look at this opportunity. And you know, it's like, oh, oh, really? What is it? Because I want to like, what is it? Really, what is it? Because I know they at least need a response. So then they go into their like mile long pitch. You 12 know, paragraphs. And I'm like, hmm. Like recently I got pitched one that was, she was trying to pitch me health and fitness. And I was like, you do realize I have a health and fitness business. Did you see that on my profile? And she's like, oh my gosh, no. And I'm like, just a little bit of advice for you. I appreciate what you're trying to do and just make sure you know who you're talking to so that you can make good, solid connections. So Do I was like, your yeah. research. Yeah. Research. But I try I get- to be cool with those particular ones because I've done it. So I want to teach them like, hey, yeah. guess what? This approach yeah. doesn't work. It, I, You know, there's going to be people out here out there that are open to your opportunity, but you just have to make sure you get to know them first. Don't just like, oh, God, when they friend you or connect with you on LinkedIn and instantly when you accept, they send you the, the pitch, right? Instant. Like, it's like an you're automated. Like, oh. You know, sometimes what my response is, like when they ask, Gina, I thought we would be good connection for each other. My response is, tell me why you think that. Yeah. And sometimes, and like half the time they don't respond. <laughs> they don't. I'm like... Uh, no tell me tell me why this is disrupt. let's have a let's ha- disrupt exactly i'm all about the disrupt tell me why you think that i wish you guys could see dina's body language right now she's like <laughs> hunched <laughs> over like a like a panther about to attack <laughs> anyways it's all about creating relationships people the end so keep going with the computer 
Hey, Warners, are you having a great time listening to this episode? We know we are. Hey, if you want to connect with us directly, don't forget you can do that at our website, womenyourmotherwarnsyouabout.com. You can find Rachel, Keith, and myself there, along with all of our social media links, especially Keith, who you can only find on LinkedIn. (laughs) But that's cool. And now back to the show. So the computer. So... We don't have to go on and on about my non-success with computers. Yes, I have gone Mac. I'm working on it. I know. I'm working on it. I, I mean, I haven't fully learned it. I spend time on the weekends playing with it. I haven't fully transitioned yet. But this laptop, two years old-ish, I bought it, if you recall, when we launched this podcast. So I bought it. Okay, this is our third season, 21, 20, 19. Okay, I bought it December 2018. Top of the line, HP Spectra 360, $1,700. Super powerful. Apparently not, because the battery stopped charging. Mm. So... I knew that there were there had there were issues with the ports cuz I was having time like the ports sometimes didn't work and I'm like all right so it's a port issue whatever. I knew it was going to ultimately be a problem. So the battery just it stops charging. I take it to a computer place cuz of course it doesn't have a warranty anymore. I take it to a computer place to say it's not charging. They're like okay, leave it here, we'll look at it. So I do that. It turns out they're like, "Well, it looks like you need a motherboard. I'm like, okay. I kind of expected to hear that. It's the motherboard. Or we're going to have to solder the ports and fix the port. Could be the ports, but it it looks like it's the motherboard. I'm like, all right, let me know how much. Now I do my research. A motherboard for that computer is about 300. Okay. It's a $1,700 computer. So I'm like trying to make a decision that expensive of a computer and it was it was like storage speed you name it really top of the line so that it would last for a while the processor all the things so they call me back and they go um it's going to be a thousand dollars and i go a thousand dollars and i know the motherboard's 300 right i'm like well i mean at a thousand dollars i might as well just buy a new computer they're like, well, it's a really good computer. I'm like trying not to laugh. It's a really good computer and, you know, it's got everything. It's an i7, it's a this, it's a that. And, you know, just replacing the motherboard will, you know, put it back in that. He's like, it's going to be very hard for you to find like another computer with all these specifications, you know, because it's a really good computer. It just needs the motherboard. And I go, all right, well, like, like, let's do the math here. This computer now costs fifteen hundred if I were to buy it brand new. So do I spend a thousand dollars on a motherboard? And still have it you know, you know how when you get in a car accident and you spend it you have it fixed, but it's just never really right again. Mm-hmm. Right? And so you take the chance and I'm like, do I spend a thousand dollars or do I go buy a new one for fifteen hundred? So I'm debating it. I'm sitting on it. I'm thinking about it. And then I decide, you know what? I'm going to go Mac. I'm going to go Mac. Someone convinced me that Macs are very good to the extent of you can buy refurbished Macs that have been all jacked up, that they have been redone with all the things. So instead of 3000 if I'm going to spend 1000 I could spend 1000 on a refurbished Okay, so I'm playing with that idea. So I go back and I tell them, you know what? Um, I'm just I'm going to come back and I'm going to pick it up. Um, I'm not I'm not going to do any. I'm not going to put the motherboard in. And and they go, well, well, what's your plan? What are you What are you going to do? We can help you find a new one. I said, no, I'm 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 good. I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going to come pick it up. So I go pick it up. Oh, it's not ready. We have to put it back together. And and if people could see my face right now, I'm like. All right, you already knew I was coming to pick it back up. You've already done the diagnostic. Is it really just sitting there apart in the back room? 
And by the way, every time I walked in that place, it smelled like marijuana. I'm not against marijuana, but there was never ever anyone sitting in the front that was like, okay, we'll be right there. And you hear like bubble noises. <laughs> Shut up. I'm kidding on the bubble noises, but I'm imagining a bong back, back there. I don't know. Cause it's like reeking of marijuana. So good Lord. So, um, Oh, it's not ready. I'm like, okay, I'll come back tomorrow. So Uh-oh. this time on my way, we know my schedule has been insane. I'm like, it was like a Friday and I'm like, all right, I've got like a 45 minute window. I need to go pick it up so I can have it back here for the weekend. I'm going to just run out in between meetings and whatnot and go pick it up. So I call them on the way and I say, hey, just want to make sure you put it back together and pick it up. And he said, oh, yeah, we got to put a couple screws in it. <laughs> I'm like, screws in it or screws in me? Which one? What do you? I didn't say that, but that's where my head was. I said, okay, well, I'm in a hurry. I'm in between meetings. I'm coming now. I'll be there in 10 minutes. I got to go as soon as I walk in. Okay. So what do you plan on doing with your computer? I said, I don't. I don't know. I don't know yet. Are you going to buy a new one? I'm not sure. I think I'm actually going to borrow one from a friend because I don't have a thousand dollars to spend right now. Oh, okay. Hang up. Calls me back five minutes later. Like I'm on my way there, right? Calls me back and says, Hey, we had an idea. Uh Uh-huh. What's your idea? So we could actually just solder the ports and that should fix the problem. And you put down a deposit of $79 and we will go in and look at those ports to solder them. And if that fixes the problem, then the cost is just $279 and then you pay the balance. If that's not the problem, we'll give you your $79 back. Okay, you know me. At this point, I'm like, I said, well, that would have been really good to know when all of this started when you said the motherboard was a thousand dollars maybe this should have been an option oh yeah oh yeah we're really sorry about that i'm like okay who's we who's we right and i'm like bill yeah exactly and i'm like um uh, well thank you i will think about that please have it ready when i get there and then he says oh god well, what are you going to do with your computer? I go, I don't know yet. I don't know. Well, we could buy it from you if you'd like. Because they also, they resell computers, right? We can buy it from you. He is trying to make a buck so hard in the wrong way. I go, okay. How much would you pay for it? Wait for it. Do you want to take a guess? A thousand dollars. We'll buy it from you for $50. <laughs> the silence speaks volumes from both of us. Uh, okay. I just bust out laughing. I said, I'm good. I think I'll donate it. Thank you. $50. Okay. So let's do the math, asshole consumers are smart today customers are smart today we have the interwebs we can research shit we research things i know the motherboard costs 300 dollars. i know you're charging me 700 in labor i figured the math <laughs> thank goodness you can do that kind of math i know, you know? and i'm not struggle and i'm not good with math right so i'm like so you're gonna buy it for fifty dollars you're gonna put in a three hundred dollar motherboard and you're gonna resell it for a thousand you are bound and determined to make your fucking seven hundred dollars i get it and no i'm not selling it to you oh my god <clears throat> and i have continued to tell people do not go there do not amen go there they're in Surfside Beach, South Carolina. Do not go there. 
but but again, Oof. another example of a horrible service that's connected to sales. I have a need, I have a problem that you can fix. Do not try to rip me off in it in a market where I can just go buy another computer for a thousand dollars. Think about it. Think about it. You they didn't sell me any true value. Then of course at some point I forgot this part. Well, if you want then I picked it up. He's like, Well, if you would like, we do have a service where we can um we can t- um, take out your hard drive and then get it loaded into a new computer. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Of course I want that service. Not from them. I will find somebody else to do that. I will find somebody else to do that because I need that done. You know, one one reason I did actually, I think that Best Buy and the Geek Squad is so inundated right now that that, that, whatever that business is, as terrible as it sounds, they probably can do whatever they want because Best Buy is taking a really long time to do service. Well, well, I mean, this is all COVID. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's COVID supply and, and demand because supply there's and demand. a limited, I mean, production on, on computer, right? Anything manufacturing production is down. Inventory on laptops is down. Even the laptop I'm working yep. off of right now in my studio, like office max was like, they had nothing like there there's nothing out there. So people are like repairing and upgrading, um, you know, and I did all my homework before I bought my Mac. So far, so good. I mean, I bought it refurbished. Um, I had a friend look at it who who says it's like totally Maced out. Like, you name it, nice. I got it. It's an i7. It's I got a terabyte. It, the processor is super fast. You're like, you know, it looks great. It's in awesome condition. And I paid a thousand dollars for it. Nicely right. done. Right. So again, did all my homework did all my homework on it and have like a 90 day, you know, return policy on it if it doesn't work out. But again, you cannot gouge people and you will lose business if you are not servicing and coming from a true place of wanting to take care of people's problems. Yeah. And people talk now more than ever, uh, social media, podcasts, like people talk about stuff and they tell their friends. It's like, um, and especially one thing about the millennial generation is they're all about, you know, bigger purpose. And if a business is bad, yeah. the bigger purpose is to make sure their friends don't get fucked yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and this is something I, I, I was preaching on the other day in a fanatical prospecting boot camp is that... And I teach this in my what to say workshop, like like as performers, when we perform on stage, our performance is going to impact whether or not someone comes back to see our show, whether or not they recommend seeing our show. We perform for repeat business. We perform for referrals. So no matter what you are selling or doing in a customer space, your performance is a sales tool, period. It's not just about selling it, closing the deal, and moving on. You have to deliver the service or the product, and then you have to continue to actually care about the customer satisfaction with that, right? Like even with the training that we do at Sales Gravy, I want to make sure that you know, I'm touching them with my clients on a regular basis of like, okay, how do you think we're doing? Um, how are you, the employees doing? Are we seeing results? I like, I stay on top of them to track results because if they're not producing results as a result of my training, well, then I need to fix something. And I literally go, okay, this didn't, this isn't working. Let's shift and do this. I want to make sure that they're getting the most value out of the money that they're putting in me because they trusted me to fix the problem. Mm, very heated. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I it goes back to some of the basics that we learn from just about every sales specialist that we get onto our show. That and that is number one, like care before you sell to people care about what the problem is isn't that wasn't De- like isn't that debbie Mraz, debbie Mrazek, right why not i don't want to screw up her name debbie was all about the eye care wasn't it debbie 
Many. Most most Many. of them are. I mean, most of Jerry them Acuff, are. Same thing. Um, just like because I that it sounds like because you can tell from the story it sounds like that that individual at the computer place was more interested in selling you something than actually solving your problem like he didn't even try to negotiate the fact that he was trying to sell you a 300 hundred dollar motherboard plus a little labor for a thousand dollars it's not that much like you can work on that. Okay. So, te- you know, is thousand dollars is too much. Well, what can we do? Because your computer does need this. Give so me options. What can, yeah. What, let's see what other options there are. Right. Instead of doing it that way of like, oh, I'm desperately trying to sell you like something because then it makes you like instinctively run away rather than when I can tell that, um, someone is really working in my best interest and gives you options then like the girls with my plane ticket they were trying to give me options and they really did care in that scenario i was the opposite of you i'm like i don't care what it costs i mm-hmm. just want my butt on the seat yeah so like they listened to me and i was like this is what i want they're like okay this is what you want well, let me just see if I can do that for you and save you money on it. And so, you know, I appreciated them. It was great. But uh, you just have to care and like, just ask questions of like that guy. He d- like he asked the wrong question. <laughs> what are you going to do with your computer? Because suddenly it's his interest anyways, because it boiled down to that. Like, well, what are you going to do with it? If it's fucking terrible, then are you going to sell it? Because we'll buy it for 50 bucks. Like. He's thinking of his profit margin yeah. rather than your problem. And not once did he even ask me. It's like, again, this was another topic I want to talk about one day is like drilling down to the root of the problem of your customer. What is the pain point here? You know what the pain point was? The pain point wasn't that my computer was broken. The pain point was I can't get my fucking job done without it. The pain point is I can't make money without it. The pain point is I need it fixed like right now Now. so that I can function. But never did he dig through or dial through that. And even in the diagnostic, I'm like, you know, how long is this going to take to assess? Because this is my work computer. So I can't work without it. Oh, it should be, you know, we should, you should hear from us today, which I never did. And I had to call them back the next day, 36 hours later. I'm like, hey, what's up? Oh, well, we're looking at it now. We'll get back to you. I'm like, you guys do know that this is my work computer. Like, you're not stupid. You're in the business. You know that most people are using it to work. There's a sense of urgency. No, it's not like 911, but it is kind of a 911 for a computer. I'm coming to the ER for my computer and I need, okay, so in an ER, they do trauma care. They can't do preventative medicine. They do trauma care. They put a band-aid on your situation, give you an aspirin, send you home and tell you to go see your general practitioner. Same thing here. My computer needed a band-aid and an aspirin and a plan. Wow. Why is that so hard? Become the expert that makes me say, oh, my gosh, that computer place was so amazing. They came up with like just kind of a Band-Aid approach for right now to tie me over and for me to figure out what to do next. I think I'm going to let them handle it for me for phase two. Was he like young and didn't know better or was he old enough to know better? He was like 12. (laughs) I don't know. He was well, like 24. Tw- in his yeah. 20s. So no offense to anybody in their 20s, but perhaps he could just use some sales training. Maybe you should send him this episode. <laughs> and I think he got sales training. It was sleazy car sales training. And I don't even want to yeah. say sleazy car because, you know, I did talk about how amazing Kia is. Like, yeah, my dealership, they're really awesome too. They're, they're, this customer service is good. Kia, the Kia dealership in Myrtle Beach is 
amazing from the day, the first day that I worked with them. And like my sales guy, they're still there. They're amazing. Their service center is amazing. And there was a day last year where my car broke down and I was at the vet with two dogs in the car. The vet's closed. Everybody's gone. I can't get the car started. And it wasn't actually too far from Kia. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And the person in my life at that time was too busy to come help me. And so I called Kia because I'm like, they're close by, but literally it was 6.05, service closed at 6. But I called the main number and I said, hey, is Tim there? Who was my sales guy like five years ago? And, but Tim's always stayed in touch with me over the years because he's a smart salesperson, Mm -hmm. very smart. And he was an amazing salesperson that I did walk in there one day. Here's a buyer story. And then I'll get back to the car breaking down. When I was ready to buy a car and I had done all my research and decided I'm going with a Kia Sorento. That's what I want. Knew what I wanted. Walked in, met Tim, said, listen, Tim, this is what I'm looking for. This car, this year, this color, these bells, these whistles, these price point, this mileage. I have a check. What do you got? He didn't even know what to do. I came in like a hurricane, right? And he almost laughed, which I think he did. We went through the lot. We looked at what was there. I didn't like any of it. I was specific. He said, I got you. Within 24 hours, he found exactly what I asked for. He convinced someone to sell their car and trade it in and delivered my car. He has forever been the best car dealer ever for me. So I recommend him all the time. So now I'm in this broke down situation. I said, hey, I can't get the car started. I don't know what the deal is. Do you guys like have a tow service or a can, you know, I I don't know what to do. I'm just calling because I don't know what to do. And I obviously need to get it over to you. And he's, you know, what sounds is, and he's a sales guy. He's not like a maintenance guy, repair guy. So he's like, okay, where are you? He's like, I'm going to I'm going to come and bring jumper cables. I don't know what else to do. That's that's the only thing I know how to do. So he shows up, jumps the car cuz it was the battery. Duh. Was the battery. <laughs> Got the car jumped so that I had enough charge to drive it to them, leave it there. And then I got a ride home and then they they fixed it the next day. That is amazing service from a sales guy who I took off the floor where he could be selling, but he came to take care of me. That's amazing service. Mm-hmm. I've got a, I've, the car guys are, they, you know, I watch them when I go over to, I go to East Coast Honda and I've had Hondas forever and I have had the same salesperson for quite a long time. And he, there was a time when he was even, away and i don't know what the circumstance was he was away that was all i got he referred me to another guy who sold me that car and then now that guy has moved to the finance section so now my client file has gone back to fred ford is his name and he calls me every year and this year he called me they call around the holidays which is a great time like between the christmas and new year's when you can mm-hmm. get a car for yeah. super cheap and I was like, you know, it's good that you called me because I'm getting a new car this year at some point. I'm keeping this one for our son. And um, I don't know what I'm going to get yet. We're looking around and I appreciate your call because I'll come over there and look at stuff on your lot because I've always bought from you. Um, and I don't know if I'll buy something from there. I don't even know what I'll get yet. But he just continued. I mean, years we're talking. I've had three or four cars from from uh east coast and so it's good to always follow up and keep that customer service going because if i see something on the lot that i like at at honda i'm gonna buy it from him and there's a hundred vultures over there but, and they're all very good and nice but i just he's been good to me and that's that's what when people know you like you i yep. trust him you know the i'm gonna stick with you and so. and and you know him like him trust him and part of that is the service he gives you that's right. So, all right. I, I appreciate this ranting session. I just needed to get this. I feel a little like a therapist. I, know. Today, I, I need like a therapist yeah. 
side. I needed funky. to get this out of my system also because I wanted to I wanted to write a blog about it. And I'm like, well, let's create a let's do a podcast about it and then I'll turn it into a blog. But that that's my that is my thing for everybody today is is service is sales, period. End of story. Do not destroy your business by giving sucky service. Boom. Mic drop. That's what I got. Any you got any That's, parting words for for this episode? I think I'll leave it at that and <laughs> thank all our Warners for being here. Yeah. And if you need any information about <laughs> us or our podcast or where mm-hmm. to find us, you could go to women your mother warns you about dot com. <sighs> Yes, you can go to women your mother warns you about dot com. You can also visit Sales Gravy University and check out the courses that we have there um, so that you're not a sucky salesperson who gives bad service. So, you know, if, if you're looking for a way to generate more revenue and sales and income for yourself, go check that out. And we will be at Outbound, the conference in June in Atlanta. I mean, who doesn't want to be with Rachel and I every single day streaming live from Atlanta? I mean, you really want to be there with Jeb, but we'll be there um, doing something (laughs) in we'll be we'll be having the party. We'll be having a party. So check that out. You go to Sales Gravy and find out more about that. SalesGravy.com. Thank you, Jeb, for sponsoring this podcast. And thank you, Warner's for listening. We will talk to you soon. Bye, Warners. Bye, Warners. This really will get serious soon. Yeah, don't... It doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious.